Welcome back, everybody. Uh, our break was a little bit longer than scheduled, but uh, that sometimes that's the way things, uh, things are. The video was a bit uh, shorter, but uh, I hope you really enjoyed the break and uh, are refreshed for the next part. Uh, I had a lovely cup of ginger tea, so I feel re refreshed myself too. Now, um, I'm really happy to announce the Nemo experience in a moment. Uh, and now that all museums are closed, it's really exclusive to have uh, this experiment together uh, in the museum. Now, as a kid, I used to go to the Nemo uh, Science Museum, and I was fascinated by the importance and everything they offer about science and technology. And it's very big. It's huge. You can, you can go there for days, um, believe me. And um, today, I'd like to welcome a Nemo expert, because uh, every afternoon we have a different expert. And for today, it's Joris Smaling. Joris. Hi. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you clearly. Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. From uh, the... From, 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 the, from the, the, the cellar of, uh, of Nemo. Of no, or not? <laughs> no, it's, we're actually on the first floor. For the oh, first floor. Okay. Museum. This is the, the first floor of the Science Museum. Uh, and yeah, normally it would be full of people here, but not now. No, exactly. So that's why it's really uh, exclusive. And uh, the ingredients needed for today's experiment is, is tonic. So I have a question about yeah. that. How come yeah. are soft drinks the perfect science uh, experiment? How, how come are soft drinks very usable for, for science experiments? Well, most people have them at home. Uh, and uh, so everyone, uh, so experiments with soft drinks, everyone can do that. Uh, so that, yeah, it's something that's on hand. But you can right. do science with almost everything. Oh, you can okay. Think about. And that's okay. something we really like to do here to bring it close to our audience. I understand and, uh, yours. I, I thought it had something to do with uh, with the gas in soft drinks. Yeah, yeah. That's you can you can uh, exactly you can do you can do a lot of things with the gas from the Mentos and Cola uh, experiment that you see on YouTube a lot. Cool, like cool. That. Well, I wish but, you uh, uh, I wish you lots of fun and also the participants. And I want to remind the participants: please make pictures of uh, of your experiment, and you can share them later with us in the chat. Yours, enjoy, and for you at home, enjoy. Thank you, Emily. Uh, yeah, well, like I said, the museum is, uh, is empty now, and we're really looking forward to having it full of people again. But for now, uh, yeah, I'm here, you're all there, and we can take this moment to uh, just have some fun and play. Uh, I'm going to start out with an experiment with an egg. I have an egg right here, uh, and the team today is uh, support. So we're going to do, uh, I'm going to, to support this egg using a little bit of salt. So let's start with that. I've also experiments uh, prepared. Uh, and uh, I'm going to use, uh, you can support me there uh, as fellow researcher or as guinea pig. Uh, but we'll get to that later. Let's just start with, start with the egg now. I'm going to pour some salt on the table. And let's have a seat. And I'm going to put this egg I'm going to see if I can get it up and put it upright with some salt. And as you can see, it stays perfectly, uh, perfectly upright. Uh, now, the question is, how much salt does the egg actually need to stay upright? Uh, so I'm going to try to blow some of the salt I put around it now away using this straw. And let's see if it stays upright. Well, actually, it does. I can try to remove some more salt. Yeah, it works pretty well. As you can see now, I blew almost all the salt away, uh, but the egg is still standing. And let's just take it off and see how much salt is left. Well, it's just a few grains. In theory, you actually need two grains of salt to support an egg, because uh, you need to make a tripod. And the two grains of salt are two legs, and the egg itself is the third leg. So that's how you can, uh, how you can support an egg with two grains of salt, in theory. So that's a, a very nice experiment about support that I'd like to share with you. 
Uh, now on to the next one. I think it's time for a drink. It's probably five o'clock somewhere. So uh, we're going to do some uh, do an experiment with some tonic. <laughs> a lot of so a lot of uh, lot of gas in there. So I'm going to pour myself a drink. Uh, yeah, we have to do it without the gin for now uh, because officially we're all still working. So uh, let's just do it uh, do it with a virgin gin tonic. Um, yeah, I'd like to ask you to um, um, fill in the poll. Uh, you should be getting a poll in your screen right now. Uh, there are a few questions, uh, and it's about the experience that, that the taste of tonic gives you. Uh, and uh, if you don't have any tonic on hand, never mind. Just try to remember the last time you tasted it. The options are a tonic is not very bitter. That's option A. Option B is tonic is uh, nice. It's bitter. I like it. Option C is, uh, yeah, it's, it's bitter, but okay. And option D, it's unpleasantly bitter. Uh, so I'm going to try it myself. Cheers. <laughs> I'd say I'd answer option B. I'd say I'd go for option B. And like I'm seeing, most of you are doing that. Most of you say tonic is bitter, but nice. And that's about, uh, my hypothesis is what we're actually testing right now. Uh, the experiment is about uh, your, ability to taste, your ability to taste kyanine. Kyanine is actually the, the chemical inside tonic that, that gives it the bitter taste. Um, and um, yeah, my hypothesis is that the, the, your ability to taste tonic is mostly genetic. So then I would expect about half of you to answer either B or C, depending on your preference, depending on whether you like bitter or not. Uh, and the rest of you should, 25%, uh, I think, should, uh, should uh, if my hypothesis is correct, should answer A, um, and 25% should answer D. And it depends on how many copies of the gene for being able to taste kinine you have. And actually the relevance of this, maybe we can look at the result. Can you show me the result again? Or not? Okay. Not anymore. Okay. Well, it looked not exactly right, but about right. Uh, yeah, you can drink a lot of gin tonic as well. <laughs> uh, it, it looks it looked about right. Uh, and this actually the research into this is still going on. And the relevance of that is that uh, because kinine is also a medicine against malaria. Uh, and it might be true that the uh, your ability to taste kinine. Uh, has a connection with the effectiveness. So the more strongly you uh, experience the bitter taste, the more receptors you have, and the more effective it's going to be. So yeah, maybe if you have to take a medicine for some reason, for whatever reason, and it tastes really bad, that might mean it works really, really well. Uh, so, okay, thank you all for uh, for joining me in this experiment. Let's go on to the next one. I have a very special device here. And actually, this is, uh, this is one of my favorite science experiments. And I'm going to explain you uh, why in a minute. Uh, we're going to do an experiment with two balloons. And again, I want to, to ask you to, uh, to answer a poll. I'm going to blow up these balloons, so I'm going to have to stop talking right now for a moment. Okay, it's one balloon. I'm going to blow it up a little bit. I connect it to this valve here. I'm going to... Go to, go to uh, Inflate the other one a little bit more. And the question is, what's going to happen when I open this valve? And the air will be able to flow freely between the two balloons. Option A is nothing's going to happen. Option B is air is going to flow from the uh, small balloon to the big balloon. Option C is air is going to flow from the big balloon to the small balloon. And option D is uh, the air will be equally divided between the two balloons. Uh, some changes in the poll still. Let's just do the experiment. Let's see what's going to happen. Right. A lot of you are going for an option D. Uh, let's just give it a try right now. Here we go. Three, two. One. Actually, as you can see, option B was correct. And that's why I really like this experiment, because it's uh, most of you at option D, almost 50% at option D. 
And that's what we get a lot when we do this experiment. For most people, the result is very surprising. And that's why I like it so much, because it really shows the value of experiments and uh, it lets everyone experience the thrill of discovery because we're actually seeing something strange right here. And why this is happening is, uh, I think you all know the experience when you try to blow up a balloon. In the beginning, it's really hard uh, because the rubber is pushing the air out. The rubber is trying to return to its original size and pushing the air out. And uh, when you already have some air in there, the air in the balloon actually pushes outwards against the rubber. So the air in the balloon supports you in blowing up the balloon. And you need a little bit of air for that to, uh, to happen. Uh, so yeah, that's an experience you all know, uh, but it's still a very surprising result. So uh, thanks a lot for joining me in that one. Uh, yeah, those are the experiments we had. Yeah, are there any questions about the experiments that we can see in the chat? If you have any questions, just ask, uh, just ask them in the chat. Let's see. Yeah. <laughs> any? Oh, yeah. Now I've got one more for you. We still have some time. Actually, a very nice one, a tip for to try at home. If you have eggs that you've actually cooked and eggs that uh, are still raw, uh, here's a trick to show you to see which one, uh, which eggs are cooked and which eggs are raw, because you can actually see that without breaking them. Uh, so I don't actually know which one of these is raw and which one of these is cooked. My colleagues just handed them to me. Uh, so I'm gonna spin them. Put the, the camera on the table and I'm gonna just spin the egg. Okay. Like you see, this egg turns really easily, and if I stop it, it stops. Okay, let's just try the other one, see if there's a difference. It spins more slowly, and when I stop it, it still keeps spinning. And this is actually the raw egg, and this is the cooked egg. And this happens because the raw egg has fluid inside. And when the egg stops spinning, the fluids, fluid keeps spinning and gets the egg back in motion. That's how you can see if an egg is raw or cooked. Um, no, not that I know of. Maybe, uh, yeah, a bottle. You can try it with an empty bottle or a filled bottle, a half filled bottle. And you should, you should get the same effect in theory. Frozen. But it's a, an in, a frozen bottle with frozen water or a bottle with liquid water. Uh, you could actually see if there's a difference. But I don't know the results, so it's an interesting experiment to try. All right. That's all we have for now. Uh, thank you all very much again for this opportunity. Thanks for watching. And uh, please, when the museum is open again, just come here and we'll do a lot of more science experiments with you and explain everything you want. And uh, for now, have to, oh yeah, tomorrow we're going to be we're going to be back again with another demonstration. My colleague Pichi will do it then. Uh, hope you enjoy it all very much. Hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. Have a nice day. Thank you.